can you please identify the structure here? Supraorbital. So it's so clear that there, it's it's a notch. It is not completed here. So um, it's a notch. You can you can check that on yourself to see whether you have a foramen or your notch by passing your thumb on the upper part of uh, the orbit, and you can check on both sides. Sometimes we have a notch on one side, a foramen on the other side. Like for example, here it's a foramen. Next question, and here we can see the inside of the orbit. What do you think that this bone is here? This is too far. I mean, here, that one. In the lateral wall of the orbit, which you can also see from this side. If you look at the skull from this side, you will be able to see it as well. Yes, so the sphenoid bone has like it's a butterfly, it has a body and two wings. Which part of the bone are you referring to? That's the greater wing of the sphenoid, which you can see it from both sides. Can you stay with me, please, a little bit? Uh, what about this foramen here? The infraorbital foramen. So they transmit the supraorbital, infraorbital foramen. They transmit nerves and vessels of the same name. And uh, there is another foramen here. Anybody else can answer me about this foramen here? What do we call it? That's the mental foramen. And if you look at an anterior view of the skull, which I don't have it, I think, here. But if you look at an anterior view of the skull, you will find that the supraorbital, infraorbital, and mental foramen, they lie on the same vertical line. And you will notice that when you study the trigeminal nerve, which has three divisions, that each of these nerves, they belong to one division of the trigeminal nerve, the supraorbital, infraorbital, and the mental nerves. Okay, so here you can see through the nose, these are the horizontal ridges, which are called the conchi. But I'm more interested about the nasal septum. And if you look at the nasal septum from the side, Actually, it, it, you don't expect it. This is as, as if I am looking it from, at it from the side. It's something like that. Uh, it is deficient anteriorly here. Here, there is cartilage. It is completed by cartilage. So that's why you can see a bone above and a bone below. It's like um, an open scissors. So what is this bone above? That's the bone below. So this one is the vomer. Yeah, and the bone above, it is the nasal septum. But the nasal septum, as you can see, is formed of two bones. One of them is the vomer and a cartilage, which is missing. So what is the other bone? Of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So you can just imagine like the ethmoid bone, that complicated bone, you can just imagine it like it's a, it has that plate, like a table, let's say, and then there is a partition coming up above the table, and then a partition coming down below the table, that's the perpendicular plate. The above the table is the crystagalli, and that table is perforated. So this is the cribriform plate. And then here we have some drawers, and these drawers are full with balloons. And these balloons are the air cells, the ethmoid air cells. So that's how the ethmoid bone is structured, simply. Here, this is one, two, three, and four. Which one of them is the styloid process? Yes, number three is the styloid process. You can see the styloid process, it looks like a pen. And the styloid process is which is part of which bone? Exactly. And number four is another process of the temporal bone. What we call it. Exactly. This is the mastoid process. In fact, this is the external acoustic meatus. And just uh, imagine that you have the oracle of your ear here. So if you just put your finger behind the auricle and try to feel the bony pro prominence, that will be the mastoid process.
and then we have another process here. This is again a process, but it's a process of the mandible. So what is this process? That's the coronary process. And then we have another process here, which has a head and neck, and together they are collectively called the condylar process. So all of them are processes, but the one that looks like a pen, a stylo, is the styloid process, and it is this one. Okay, so can you just describe to me what you see here, and I will follow your description? Yes, you are right. Perfect. Thank you very much. When, what do we call this piece of bone together? It has a special name, the skull cap. The neurocranium, yes, it's the cavity, but the cap that covers the cavity is called the calvaria of the skull. And this is the inside of the calvaria. You can see here, these are markings of an, a blood vessel. Any idea about which blood vessel is this? It's a blood vessel that supplies the meninges, the coverings of the brain, not the brain itself. Any idea? These are the branches of the middle meningeal artery. You are right. So these supply the meninges as well as the bone of the skull. The bone of the skull is mainly supplied by, by these. It's not supplied by the, the blood vessels that are located in the scalp. That's why you, you can remove the scalp without endangering the bone. And if I will tell you that this is the anterior aspect, what do you think these cavities are? Exactly, thank you very much. Okay, so this is a um, close view of the cella torsica. That's the region of the cella torsica. And here you can see part of it. That's the region of the cella torsica. So we are here just to orient you. This is the, what we call the middle cranial fossa. This foramen is obvious. What is this foramen from its shape? Yes, have you heard of foramen of Ali before? Anyone else? Yes, exactly. So that was an embryonic foramen in the interatrial septum. Again, it's oval in shape, so it's called foramen of Ali. But this is another one, foramen of Ali. And behind it, which is a small one, which is called foramen uh, spinosum. And here I can follow the middle meningeal artery. And you can see that here, until now, the middle meningeal artery is grooving the bone. Until there is one point here, it, the groove becomes so deep that it makes a tunnel inside the bone, see? So the groove disappeared because the artery is passing within the bone, making a tunnel within the bone. That's why you can expect that it's when the bone cracks from a hit from outside, then it can easily injure uh, this artery. What do we call this point here? Any idea? I just want to remind you that this point is, in fact, it is located here. That's the talion, exactly. That's the region of the talion. The bone will be thin, and in addition to that, the, the bone is grooved and made into a tunnel by the middle meningeal artery. Here, we are in the posterior cranial fossa, and this is, I can call, the mother of all foramina. So, what is this foramen? Yes, foramen magnum, the biggest of the foramina. Again, you can easily see here, this is the middle cranial fossa because the border here between the posterior and the middle is this bone. So what is this bone here that looks like a rock? Correct, the petrous part of the temporal bone. And it has this opening here, this foramen, that allows the passage of cranial nerve 7 and 8. What is the foramen? 
Eight is the vestibulocochlear nerve, which is responsible for balance and hearing. So I'm giving you a clue. Exactly, internal auditory or internal acoustic meatus. And then we have this foramen here, which is actually, it is the shape of the foramen is not circular, but it's a very big foramen because it not only allows the passage of nerves, but it also allows the passage of a large vein. So this foramen is the, taking the name from the name of the vein that passes through it, that's the jugular foramen. 